here we have a switch mode power supply now the first rule of thumb when troubleshooting any switch mode power supply whether it's in a television an air conditioner unit washer dryer printer video game is always know that there are two sides to the power supply you're gonna have a hot side which is usually where the plug is going to the core. I mean, I'm sorry, where the cord is going to the wall. And there's going to be a cold side, which are producing your secondary voltages, like your standby, your 12 volts, 24 volts. And it's always separated by a physical line, usually smack dab in the middle of the circuit board. As you can see, we have a black line going from here to down here. So this is hot. I'm sorry, this is the cold side. And this is the hot side. Now, always know that there is no electrical connection between the cold side and the hot side. I said none. There is no electrical connection between the cold, the hot side, and the cold side. Okay, but and there's always going to be transformers. These are your switching transformers that are usually going right on top of the line. So we have a side here of the transformer, windings here, and we have windings here which are not connected. There's like a ferrite core in between and it's not connected. Same with this one. Okay, so what it does is that the side that's on the hot side has a voltage and or current across it that is being switched on and off approximately 50,000 times per second, about 50 kilohertz, all right? And once that collapses and comes back up, it produces energy and then energy is transferred onto this side the cold side where it's then rectified by these diodes and then going to the pentacle capacitors and then going out to the main board or the, the motherboard so how does it know how does it how does the hot side know when there's a problem on the cold side since there is no electrical connection this right here And it looks like an IC, right? But between these two pins on the hot side and the two pins on the cold side, there is no electrical connection. Same here. We have our hot side, which is where the plug is right here. Okay, that's the hot side. And then we have the cold side. This is even marked. Hot, cold. Okay, the hot side is like the, the danger side. Be careful where you put your hands because you will get a bit of a shock, right? Once again, here's our separation line right here. Going from right here that you can, can't really see it because it's kind of vague. But as you can see, it continues right here. Here's another transformer, another transformer right here, and then another one, all right, which is going across the isolation line. And also, we have the same, actually we have four of these now, these little IC looking things, or spider bug looking things, right? Call them bugs. There's actually four on this one. And keep in mind, sometimes those may be underneath the board. So, and that's how we can communicate between the hot side and the cold side. So the hot side knows when to shut off when it's a problem on the cold side, if necessary. So you might say, we say, big dog, okay, what are, what are those and how is that possible there's no electrical connection inside of that, those ICs? So you may be asking, what are those little black things or IC chip looking things? located right on top of the separation line between the hot and cold side of a power supply. And those are called optocouplers. They're, known as, they're called optocouplers, but they're also known as optoisolators, photocouplers, photoisolators, whatever. But the main term that they're commonly called is called an optocoupler. And it's just like it sounds. It has a light on one side, an LED on one side, and a trans phototransistor on the other side. Now they come in very various pin configurations 
Uh, usually the four pin ones are the ones that you will see in televisions and most power supply, switch mode power supply boards. But they also come in a six pin configuration, like right here. Okay. And also an eight pin configuration. Right. So it's always good to look up the part number of the optocoupler, just like here it says TLP2551, and get the, uh, the specs on it and see the actual diagram inside. As you can see, one side is an LED that lights up, and the other side is a phototransistor. So pretty much, this is how it works. This is inside of an optocoupler. And as you can see on one side, on the input side, pins one and two, we have a actual LED, all right? And the, on, the out, the, on the output side, pins three and four, we have a phototransistor. So actually this part you see catching the light is is the base. And then we have the collector and emitter pins uh, coming out of the optocoupler on the other side. Okay, so basically all it does is just like a regular transistor or a FET, once the base is activated, it is going to pretty much provide a resistance and set it between the collector and the emitter pins or kind of like shorten them out or being used as some type of resistor, right? So the, the res, when the light lights up on the input side, pins one and two, the LED light, when the LED lights up, pins three and four are going to produce some type of resistance instead of being open. Okay, so like I said, this is the one, the four pin one is the one that you'll most likely see on many switch mode power supplies, all right, including televisions. We'll start with pin one. So there is the LED on between pins one and two, and pin one is usually always marked with a dot. So you know that this is pin one, pin two, right across from pin two is pin three and four, just like on a regular IC, uh, IC chip. And as you can see, there's no electrical connection in between pins one and two and pins between the input side and the output side. So the most commonly used, uh, that could be used for feedback, just like we've seen with the Swiss mode power supply and the pulse with what pulse with modulator IC, uh, getting the feedback signal from the optocoupler because the actual PWM chip is going to be on the output side and this is going to be going to the, the pin four will actually be going to the feedback pin on the PWMIC and the input side are going to be monitoring the output voltages. All right, so the, the five, the standby voltage will be coming through here and going out. And this one also might be hooked up to another rail, like a 12 volt rail. And so we have to make sure that we have a 1.1 volt across this LED. All right, just like in a television, the, the backlight LEDs, the individual, the individual LEDs, are going to be using three volts or either six volts, right? To light the LED up. Same concept. Pin one is the anode, pin two is the cathode, and pins four is the <clears throat> collector, and pin three is the emitter. So another way of doing, uh, another thing they use optocouplers for on power supply boards is to activate a voltage or a certain um, IC, right? VCC for an IC, for instance, it may turn on the power for the correction, um, controller IC, or even another IC for whatever else they use, anything on, on anything that's on the hot side. That way we don't have any, any electrical connection. So therefore, just like in this one, you see we have a five volt potential right here, right? And this is ground, okay? So obviously when the coupler is off, when there is no light, um, you're not gonna read anything across here because the circuit is actually open, right? Once the coupler, once the LED lights up inside the coupler, once it's activated, then we're going to close pins four and three or provide some type of resistance. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily short pins four and three, but once this, this LED lights up, we're gonna have some type of resistance Depends on the type of current that's coming through this LED or how bright it is. And we're going to have a complete circuit now. It's five volts going through this, through this resistance, right? To ground. 
and we're going to have five votes going out. Same here, same concept, right? We got VCC voltage here at the collector pin, and the emitter pin is going to ground, right? So obviously, once the LED lights up, and this base of this transistor senses that using a photo, right? A photo sensor is going to actually provide some resistance across these two pins. And now we have a complete circuit and now we have an output voltage. Same on this one here, same concept. See, we have a power source. All right, we have a one point, a, a, approximately a one volt voltage drop across this LED. It's gonna light up. The base is gonna actually sense that. It's gonna close the collector and the emitter or provide some type of resistance between the collector and the emitter. And they wanna have voltage output where it says VO. That easy. So here is our opto isolator, opto coupler. That is pin one with the dot is. So that is the anode of that LED. And the pin two is the cathode. So I've got my positive lead here. I got my power supply hooked up to the input. Positive lead on the anode, negative lead on the cathode, even though it's blue, it's the negative lead, okay? And over here on the output side on the collector and emitter, at my collector pin, I have my, um, well, it doesn't matter, but I've got my positive lead and my negative lead, and my meter is in a resistance. So that is going to my power supply. And it is at, it is at 1.1 volts. It's not on yet, but it's at one point. It's set to 1.1 volts. As you can see at the top where it says channel three set and 100 milliamps, right? 0.1 amps. Okay. And my meter there is at 20 meg, 23 mega ohms. Just search it around and stuff. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn that particular channel on channel three and if you look right here this is the voltage here is going to change to 1.1 volts and then look at the meter look at the resistance on the output side see that that is 500 ohms it's reading 0.5 k but it's, it's 500 ohms so if i increase my voltage I just turn this knob here. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. I'm in the wrong thing. I actually increased my current. I think that's fine. Voltage. Let's increase the voltage. Right, let's go down and look at the resistance. See, when the voltage is going down, the resistance goes up. Now we're at 0.96 volts and I'm at 137K. I'm going to go up to 1.1. 1.1 volts. Now we're at 200 ohms. Let's go back to 1.1. 1 .1. One Easy. And we're back at 500 ohms. All right, so now let's go up in resistance. I'm sorry, in voltage. Let's increase the voltage to, let's see. Let's keep going and just look at the meter, at the ohm meter. See that? I'm at 1.2 and it's already down to 76 ohms. Hey guys, if you already work on televisions or other electronics, and want to learn more about television repair make sure you check out the art of troubleshooting and repairing modern televisions this is an intense detailed easy to understand online television repair course designed to show you how tvs work by covering ported circuits and sub circuits you are not going to find anything like this online especially in the english language students also have an online community where they can post videos, pictures, and ask questions about TV repair. 
the entire course is step-by-step -step instructions covering every circuit from the power cord to the power button and that order and that my friends is the art knowing how the television works from start to finish all the trainings include live PowerPoint presentations showing you in detail how all the circuits work and also live hands-on trainings putting you right there in the action this entire course is expected to be completed by midsummer but you do have access now for a special pre-launch price and it presently includes over eight hours of intense detailed easy to understand trainings and my name is robert i've been working on television for 30 years and i wish i would have had a course like this about 10 years ago that would have absolutely shortened my learning curve if you want to see a 15 minute demo demonstration of the course just go to my channel big dog 8882 and check out the tv repair course update and live course footage and that has over 15 minutes of raw footage from inside the course so guys what are you waiting on click the link below or in the video somewhere and i will see you in the course big dog out